Thanks for joining us. I'm Elaine Quijano. We continue to follow two breaking news stories, Princess Catherine's cancer diagnosis and in Moscow, where Russian media is reporting dozens of people are dead and more than 100 are injured following a mass shooting and fire at a concert hall. According to Russian media, several gunmen in military fatigues burst into Crocus City Hall and began shooting at the crowd. Russian media also says the suspects threw explosives, which caused the building to catch fire. Reports say visitors are being evacuated, but some may be trapped by that fire. The incident is being called an apparent terror attack. Let's bring in Sam Vinograd. She is a CBS News contributor and a former assistant secretary for counterterrorism, threat prevention, and law enforcement policy for the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. Sam, thanks very much for being with us. Can you tell us about how the U.S. and Russian governments are responding to this still unfolding situation? Certainly. I think it's important to keep in mind that just about two weeks ago, the U.S. government actually issued a call for American citizens in Russia to avoid large gatherings like concert halls. In my experience, having been a part of issuing these kinds of advisories in the past, that sort of notice would have been based on credible intelligence about an imminent terrorist attack. It would have been based on sources indicating planning and access uh, to venues and weapons for an attack in Moscow. So the U.S. government was very clearly aware that something was in the works. Fast forward to today, and in the immediate aftermath of this apparent terrorist attack, it is a certainty that on the intelligence side, U.S. government officials are working to ascertain who the perpetrators were of this attack. Number two, if there are any other attacks that may be imminent, and then on the security side and on the diplomatic side, our embassy is undoubtedly trying to ascertain whether any American citizens were present at the concert hall. And if so, if they were hurt and are and if they're in need of any kind of support whatsoever. So this is an intelligence exercise for the time being, as well as an immediate security one, too. And Sam, I know it's early yet, um, but coming on the heels of the reelection, of Russian President Vladimir Putin uh, is timing that you know is is um, difficult to ignore. Uh, but obviously, it's unclear whether or not there's a relation there. But um, what do you make of the sense, um, you know, that this is you know sort of right on the heels of that event? There's been, uh, as we were talking to a previous guest, um, some dissatisfaction uh, with Putin, but at the same time. Uh, the president won his re-election uh, by overwhelming numbers in an election that uh, outside observers, including, including the United States, uh, obviously question um, the integrity of. Um, what should we make of when this attack is taking place? Well, again, the U.S. government, I believe the Canadians as well, actually warned that an attack was imminent two weeks ago. So while the timing does come after the sham election that Putin claims to have won, the planning for uh, an attack was understandably uh, underway for several weeks at least based upon the U.S. government's warning. I do think it's a little um, it, it's a little dangerous to start speculating on whether this was or wasn't linked to Putin's sham election at this time. Moscow and Russia are not strangers to terrorist attacks. We've seen ISIS-linked uh, entities engage in attacks in the past, separatists and others. So at this point, again, while the immediate focus is ensuring that there's no additional loss of life, the actual perpetrators on this on, uh, of this attack could be any number of entities, whether it's individuals upset about the sham election results, whether it's separatists from Chechnya or other separatist regions, whether it's ISIS-linked entities. There's a long list of potential perpetrators, and I am sure that the FSB, Russia's intelligence services, the CIA, and intelligence partners globally are working to ascertain who the perpetrators are, not only because of this attack, but because if this was a global terrorist organization and not one that is just focused on Russia, folks are going to want to rule out the possibility that there may be other attacks, whether in Russia itself or more broadly across the globe. And, and as we continue to monitor these images out of Moscow, we see the enormous presence uh, by authorities there. Uh, so here in the United States, uh, as you mentioned, the different kind of groups uh, and agencies are trying to determine who may have been responsible. Uh, and yet there was information that was gathered, you said, 
um, about this potentially being in the works. That kind of information, Sam, that's not information that would have been shared with the Russians, uh, would it? I mean, that that is something that would have gone out. I actually out. think it would. It would be. I actually think it would. Okay. It would. And the U.S. government has provided intelligence to the Russian government in the past about um, terrorism-related matters. There's a certain duty to warn other governments when we have that kind of intelligence, when we have intelligence that there could be a loss of civilian life. So in my experience as a counterterrorism official, the U.S. government would share classified intelligence with the government of Russia about a potential imminent terrorist attack and terrorism-related plotting, while simultaneously warning the public to avoid certain venues to avoid a civilian loss of life. So despite mm. the incredibly tense and acrimonious relationship between the United States and Russia at this time, I do believe that there was intelligence sharing related to the advisory that the U.S. government put out two weeks ago about an imminent terrorist attack. And I would also assume, Elaine, then the aftermath of this attack, as the U.S. government uh, gathers intelligence on the perpetrators and any other um, plots related to this one, it would share that with the Russians as well, as well as with partners. We may also see the U.S. government offer uh, recovery-related support, disaster-related support in the aftermath of this terrorist attack, like we've done in the past. Interesting, uh, because there has been uh, so much reporting on that acrimonious relationship uh, between the two countries. So to hear that uh, is, is really fascinating. And, and Sam, I wonder um, what the Russian public themselves may be told through official channels about this, because we know they have access to social media and other lines outside of sort of official government channels to get their information. What would you expect to hear sort of officially uh, from either Vladimir Putin himself or Russian officials about what took place? Unfortunately, I think we should expect Vladimir Putin to do what he does best, and that is to spew misinformation and disinformation about this terrorist attack. Putin has often campaigned and spoken publicly about how he is the only leader that can provide for Russia's security, and he's really used that as a pretense to engage in a lot of dictatorial steps, both internally and invading other countries. So regardless of who the actual perpetrator is of this attack, I would expect Vladimir Putin to try to point the finger at somebody that he perceives will serve his political interests. So whether that's claiming uh, inaccurately, perhaps that this was Ukrainian uh, individuals upset about the war in Ukraine, whether this was political opposition, he will make a claim uh, that the perpetrators were somebody that he perceives to be um, politically expedient to him, regardless of who the actual perpetrator was in this case. And that's really where the U.S. intelligence community, our intelligence partners, will likely have to focus on who actually did this, not only because the public deserves to know the truth, but again, understanding who did this, what the motivations were, are important so that we prevent it from happening again and keep civilians safe, whether it be in Russia or more broadly across the globe. All right, Sam Vinograd. Sam, thank you. Thank you.